Yep, we're good. Slow as humanly possible. Okay. Yeah, I spend most of my days working on mass spectrometers in the laboratory. So every every you know one, a couple times a year, I get to go out and get fresh air and uh, sample in the mud. Yeah, I know what you're asking. What the hell am I doing in the middle of winter on a freezing cold boat holding a bag of mud? Well, scientists like Bruce Brownowell and his team of researchers are trying to work out what Superstorm Sandy put in this bag of mud, and it's not looking good. So we're in this Reynolds Channel that goes between uh, Jones Inlet and East Rockaway Inlet. When Superstorm Sandy hit here, the south shore of Long Island, it knocked out low-lying sewage treatment plants like these. And so there's about 60 million gallons of sewage that comes out from Bay Park. It took days to contain the flow. We're going to go back and look at some of these that are close to the sewage treatment plant. Months after the storm, New York scientists are taking to boats like this for a closer, more forensic look at the impacts of the storm. Bruce is tracking down where tainted sludge wound up. And for this professional mud master, Watch out. he's shocked. It's an unusual storm in that I don't think there's any evidence in the sedimentary record that we've ever moved this much sediment over the last hundred years. So our job is to, to figure out where this recent material came from. I was hoping to get you a prettier core than this. We can look at some of these sediments to see if we had a buildup of certain sewage-derived contaminants. It's rare that you have a situation where you've studied an environment right before a storm uh, and then been able to go out right afterwards. For Bruce, this is much more than a pile of poo. It tells a story about long-term impacts of the $70 billion storm. The biggest change? If we had taken this sample before the storm, it would be black at the surface and there'd be lots of uh, worms and, and uh, uh, crustaceans. Tiny sea creatures and plants that called the seafloor home are now nowhere to be found. The bottom used to have either all the uh, seaweed on the bottom, a lot of it. You know, if I'm a fish and I'm coming in looking for some of these uh, worms and amphipods to eat uh, in the spring, they're not going to be there. 50 stations I've been to in the last week and a half, not one of them has any of this still on the bottom. So it all got ripped up. It looks like that upper few centimeters is, is very, very much different everywhere that we looked. It's cold, wet work. But if Bruce can figure out how Sandy moved the mud, it could help protect shorelines and boat channels like these from storms to come. But the fact that I've been all over the bay now, uh, I think I'm getting a pretty good picture of at least where the muddy sites are in the bay of how things have changed. <laughs>